we're going to take a look at generating reports in Applos. When you run a report, essentially you're getting the answer to a question. That might be, how much money do I have in my bank account? Or how much money have we spent on program expenses? Or even finding out who our donors were for the past year. All of those questions can be answered with a report, and that's what we're going to look at. So in Applos, when you log in, you land on the dashboard. To run reports, we're going to navigate here to reports. And so we're going to just take an overview of what's on this page, what, what kind of things we have available. So this first section, quick access, are going to be uh, recent reports, so reports that you've uh, recently run, uh, you can easily access them again and pull it again. What you can also do in the quick access is you'll see these stars on the left side of the report names. And so if you click on any of the stars, it's going to mark it as a favorite. And those will also be in your quick access area. So if you have reports that you run all the time and you want to be able to quickly and easily get to them, you can mark them as a favorite and then they're right here at the top of your page for you. Going down, we've got the most used reports, and this is referring to the most commonly used reports um, among our customers. So for churches and nonprofits that are using uh, Applos, these are the reports that they're most commonly running. So you've got your income statement, which uh, might also be called a statement of activity. Uh, you've got your balance sheet report, which might also be referred to as a statement of financial position. And then you've got your budgeting reports. You'll, you'll notice for each of these reports, there is the um, report itself and then there's some other versions underneath. So for example, we've got an income statement. We can run an income statement by fund or we can show a comparative income statement uh, by month or comparing the current month versus the last month. Um, we've got a, a few different options. For the balance sheet, we can run a, a normal balance sheet or we can run one that um, breaks it out by fund as well. And same thing for budget actual, similar to the income statement, you can run this comparative if you wanted to look at the current month versus the last month or the current month versus uh, the year, you'll be able to see that comparison. So those are the three most common reports. We're gonna take a closer look um, after the overview at the income statement and the balance sheet reports. Um, but let's take a look at the other sections we have here. We've got tag-based reports. So if you are using custom tags in addition to the accounts and funds that you've set up in your chart of accounts to mark your transactions, you'll be able to run specific reports for them. So your tags are used on transactions that are using income or expense accounts. Um, so you have an income statement that's specific for tags. So that way, as you're tagging transactions, you're able to see that information in a helpful uh, report. If you are an advanced accounting com customer and you are using the other uh, tags that are available, which would be departments, locations, and projects, unless you've renamed those to um, something to be custom to your organization, those advanced tags will also be in this section as well if you have those set up and you have them enabled. So tag-based reports, uh, you'll have, again, an income statement and several other um, reports, and you'll be able to filter those and view for each tag that you have set up. The next section, other, we've got some additional transaction-based reports. So you'll have your general ledger, um, you'll be able to see a list of your journal entries, et cetera. These other reports uh, would be your bank reconciliation reports. So if you're using that functionality in the software, you'll be able to review and kind of see a summary of each reconciliation that you've completed. And if you're using accounts payable or accounts receivable, you'll be able to track uh, those outstanding bills or invoices as well from these reports. The people-based reports, uh, most of these reports are, so the contact statements, income by contact and expense by payee, these are referring to um, contact-based or people-based reports 
um, looking at the transactions that have been recorded in the fund accounting area. So that's where you've got income and expense and the contact statements would be re related to your receivables. Um, the contact list would be information, uh, contact information that you're, you're entering in the people area. So things like email address, address, phone number, that kind of a thing. So you'll be able to run a contact list. I point this out because this is in contrast to the contact and information that's in the donations area. So the donations area of the reports page, the notes and reminders reports, uh, this is, these are also things that you track in the people area of the software. However, they're more related to donor management than they are accounting. So that's why we keep them with the rest of your donation reports. Um, and the, so you've got several different reports. Again, if you're asking the question, wanting to know who your donors were or what, um, what purposes you received contributions for, that's all information that you can find here. These top two reports are especially important because these are the two that you will use to generate your contribution statements, for example, at the end of the year. So donations by contact, or if you're using households to um, organize your donors, uh, you can also run the, the same report, but based on households rather than individual contacts. So we'll take a closer look at this report as well, just to kind of give a brief overview. The next thing we have here is saved reports. Uh, so if, as we go through a report and example, you'll see that there are different filters and display options as far as what columns and um, just customizations that you can add to a report. So if you have a report that you've built out and you um, are going to be running it again, or if it's something that you're running on a, on a regular basis, you can save the report so that way you don't have to build it from scratch every time you need to run it. Um, and that way all of your filters and your options will be saved for you. You can update the date and uh, that'll just make it real easy for you. So we have two here and we'll go over how to save a report when we're looking at one of our example reports. The last section uh, we have here, these last two reports are reports that you uh, may not use, but uh, we have them available. Some organizations do have a need to run a trial balance or to see their statement of cash flows. So if you um, are looking for those reports, you'll just want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll find them there. So that's kind of an overview of the different types of reports that we have. So I just want to take um, the rest of our time here just to take a look at um, a balance sheet and an income statement because those are two of the most common reports that are run and then again we'll also look at the uh, donations by contact report just to briefly go over how to generate your contact uh, your contribution statements for your contacts so if we scroll back up and we can go to quick access we can look at an income statement now typically your income statement is going to be showing your income totals your expense totals, and the net between the two. So, uh, but before we get into the income statement in particular, what I wanna go over are these um, drop-down menus and options at the top of pretty much every report that you're gonna run. So you'll have, starting at the top, you'll have the name of the report. You can click on the carrot here to see any related reports or if you have any reports um, of this type, so any income statements in this case that you have saved, um, you'll see those options there. So for quick access, you can close that to collapse it. Then starting from the left, the first drop down is going to be your date range. So you'll see that you've got some preset options um, as well as custom. So if you are looking for a specific date, you can fill in, you can use either the calendar widget or type in the date and you can apply that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead for our example, I'm gonna pull from last year so that we have some actual data to look at. The next drop down in the middle here is report filters. Um, and this is going to be varied depending on what report you're running. So the report filters that are available 
for your income statement are going to be different from the report filters that are available on a general ledger report or uh, on a donations by contact report. It's going to just be different depending on what report you're running. So for this report in particular, there is a option to filter by funds. So I can click on that. Um, anything that is checked is going to be included. Anything that is not checked, so if I uncheck my Save the Turtles fund, um, it's going to be excluded. So you'll, you can apply the filters that you're wanting. If you're just wanting to do one and you have several funds, you can unselect all and then just check the one that you're wanting. Um, you can also, if you're having trouble look, finding a fund, um, I can start typing in the name and it'll filter it so it's easier to, to find it. But for our example, I'm just going to go ahead and include all of our funds in this report and click apply. And then the last drop down that we have is report layout. So again, similar to report filters, the options here are going to vary depending on what report you're running. Um, but for this particular report, we've got some options for what we can display as well as our account basis. So display is, we'll go over each one of these, um, but essentially it's going to impact what the report looks like and what is included. The account basis is going to be um, reflecting if you're running on an accrual or a cash basis. So if you need to switch that, um, you can toggle between those here and click apply. But let's go over the display options for this report just as an example. So we've got zero balances. So by default, any account that doesn't have, uh, that has a zero balance, so it has no transactions or no, um, I guess no, not no transactions, but it doesn't have any balance uh, associated with it is going to be hidden from the report. If you do want to include those zero balances and those line items, you can check that box and that's going to include um, those lines for you so that you still see the account included and you'll see that its balance is zero. Uh, same thing for inactive accounts. By default, they're going to be hidden. So if you've disabled any of your accounts in the account list page, uh, they're not going to be included if they don't have a balance. So uh, if you do want to include those, you can check that option. Now, uh, the subtotal by group refers to the account groups that you would have set up in your chart of accounts. Um, so you can include those. So if we check that option and click apply, we can see now that we under our income section, we have these uh, underlined headers. So general income, fundraiser tag income, project tag income, et cetera. And so under each one of these account groups, we have the group displayed as well as a subtotal for all of the accounts that are in each of these groups. So this group has uh, three different accounts underneath it and its subtotal. Um, and so do the rest of these. Same thing will happen for expense. You'll see the account group name, you'll see the accounts that are underneath it, and a subtotal for each of those account groups. What you can also do, just to make it clear, I'm going to uncheck that option and instead check the, the sub accounts and click apply. So if you have sub accounts set up in your chart of accounts, uh, by default, uh, you can, if you have that option unchecked, what those totals are going to show you is uh, everything is going to be rolled up into the parent account that you've assigned. But if you do want to see the detail, for example, for this 4,000 custom income account, it is the parent account to the 4,000.1 custom income sub one and the 4,000.2 custom income sub two. So these two are sub accounts and you can tell by the indentation that these are sub accounts of this parent account. So if I didn't have my sub account option included on report layout, these two totals would be rolled up and, in, and included here. But instead I can see anything that's been recorded to my 4,000 income account I can see anything that's been recorded to my 4,000.1 account and my 4,000.2 account. And then I can see the total of all three of those. So that's gonna be um, in bold here. So the total for my custom income parent account. So depending on how much detail you're wanting, you could certainly add both subtotal by group and by accounts. Um, 
again, just depends on, on how granular you're wanting to go. On the opposite end of the, uh, the scale here, we've got um, if we uncheck sub accounts, we can also um, exclude account rows. So if we do that, what that's going to do, if I apply, that's going to take out all of the line items for both income and expense, and it's just going to give you your totals. So you might have a need just to show the total amount of income that you've brought in, the total expense, and the net between the two. Um, and so you do have that option as well. So you can kind of include as much or as little um, of that detail as you're wanting on a report like this. Uh, one thing I did want to note here is you'll see at the bottom, you've got your net income or loss and the loss is in parentheses. And so something to point out here, anytime you're seeing a number in parentheses on in report in Aplos, that's going to indicate a negative number. So if we had, uh, if these numbers were switched here and we had actually spent more than we had uh, received, then we would have a loss and this number here would be in parentheses to indicate that that's a negative. So that's kind of a, an overview of the income statement um, in general. But coming back up to the top, so I went over these kind of customization options, but I also wanted to touch on these uh, blue buttons that you're gonna see on the upper right of the reports. So these are kind of the options that you have for your reports. So you can share your reports, which is gonna be by email. So you can select the format of your report. You can select the sending email, um, who it's coming from, as well as who you're sending it to. You can set up the subject and the text. So let's say, for example, I'm going to send this to, um, to our friend Aaron. And I'm just going to leave the message as is. And I'm going to click share. And that's going to give me this confirmation that the report was shared. And when you share a report, it's going to be attached or sent as an attachment. Um, based on whatever report uh, file format that you've selected. So I selected the um, Excel uh, and that's what it's going to be received as. Next here, I mentioned on the previous page, uh, just looking at the reports page as a whole, that you have the option to save reports. So let's say, for example, I want to save this report that doesn't have the account rows, it's just my total income and total expenses. What I can do is click Save. It's gonna give me two things to fill out. The first one is the name, and the name of the report is what's going to be displayed on your reports page. So in that section that says Saved Reports, um, this is what I'm gonna, this is how I'm gonna know what report this is. So I'm gonna call this um, income statement. Oops. Uh, uh, no account rows. So you can be more creative than me, but uh, whatever you're wanting to, uh, it's gonna help you know what report this is. You'll wanna save that as the name. The title is what's actually going to appear on the statement. So for example, if you wanted, um, like I mentioned before, sometimes this report is called, is also referred to as a statement of activities. So you can change uh, what uh, this title here uh, reads as. So if I type in statement of activity, and then click save. What that's gonna do is it's gonna show me that my report saved and it's also going to update the title on my report. So when I go back to the main reports page, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna see this because this is the title, but I am going to see income statement, no account rows. So that's going to um, be there on the reports page when we go back. The last two things before we go and look at that, you also have the option to print the report and you also have um, download options. So similar to the share, you'll, you'll be able to select what file format. So these uh, two are both Excel, depending, this is a newer version of Excel, this is for older versions of Excel. 
CSV for another type of spreadsheet file or PDF. So you have options as far as um, saving a copy of the report. So if we go back to the main reports page and we can scroll down real quick back to the saved area. And so you can see my income statement, no account rows is here and saved. If I click on it, it's gonna take me back to the same report. All of my um, options that I've selected up here are saved for me. So those, I don't have um, any of these display options selected, so that, that held for me. So that's how you save a report. That's, those are the options as far as um, what you can do once you run a report. So I just wanna to touch on two other reports um, that are commonly run. So that one of those is gonna be the balance sheet. So your income statement answers the question, how much money have I received for X or how much money have I spent for X or where are we at? Are we at a, a is it net income or are we at a loss? That's what your income statement is answering. Your balance sheet is answering the question of, um, you know, how much money do we have or how much money is set aside for this particular fund or how much money do we owe? So um, again, this report is often also referred to as a statement of financial position. Um, so if you're looking for that, that's the balance sheet in Aplos. So again, similar to the income statement, all of your reports are gonna have some sort of date option on the left. You'll have your report filters. Again, this report only has funds available to filter by. And report layout, again, uh, these are similar to what is available on the income statement, but uh, you know you can select what you're wanting to see here. Uh, one thing that I did want to point out is just like the income statement and, and other reports, balance sheet has different uh, versions that you can run. So this is just your standard balance sh sheet that's going to show you your list all of your assets and their totals all of your liabilities and their totals, and then your equity, which are your fund balances. So sometimes we'll get calls or um, questions about um, fund balances that don't quite look like what um, customers are expecting. So what we like to recommend is if you're seeing a fund balance um, that doesn't look quite correct, uh, the running instead of a just a standard balance sheet, a balance sheet by fund, is often um, a little bit more helpful to get some more information. Um, so kind of drilling down and getting um, still an overview, but uh, with, with some a uh, little bit finer detail. So again, to get to there, we can either go back out to the reports page, or we can click on balance sheet, and under related reports, we're gonna see balance sheet by fund. So I'm gonna select that option. So as you can see, there are the same formats here. The title has changed. You have the option. By default, it's going to bring it up in a comparative view, so where you have your funds as different columns. Uh, you can also show your funds as pages. So if I select this option, this is going to give me a separate re balance sheet report for each of my funds. So this is my balance sheet report for my general fund, which is expanded and I can click on this carrot here to collapse it. And then I can scroll down and expand it for my missions fund and same thing for my building fund and my other funds. But for um, this example, I find that it's most helpful to view it as columns. So I'm gonna go back to that view. And that's where you can toggle between that. And you'll note that by uh, default, it's pulling just the first three of your funds. But again, you can go to report filters, you can add, um, you know, to view whichever funds you're wanting to see. Um, so for this one, maybe I'll also add save the turtles is what I'm wanting to see. And then what I also recommend is under report layout on, on this report, the balance sheet by fund option, you'll see another section here for columns, uh, which is for the total column. So if we take a look right now, this is showing the balance sheet total for um, each of these accounts and it's separated by fund, but what we're missing is like the overall total of, so if I wanna know, this shows me I have $52,000 in my um, checking account that's designated, that's part of the general fund, but if I wanna know how much money I have overall in my checking account, um, I can include this total column 
and click apply. And that's going to uh, add this column that's uh, labeled as account or sorry, amount. And that's going to show me my overall total. So again, here it would be maybe helpful to include all of your funds, but this way, what this shows you is I have $117,000 in my general fund. And this report is showing me where that money lives. So there's some of it in my checking account, some of it's in my savings, some of it's in petty cash, some of it's hanging out in accounts receivable. Part of it is tracked maybe as a fixed asset for my building. Um, and then I also have a balance for accounts payable. So these are bills that are, um, you know, going to be paid out of my general fund that are still outstanding. Um, and all of that is going to be totaling to this, uh, this fund balance. So this kind of gives you, if, you, if you're not sure where this number is coming from, this kind of gives the breakdown of which accounts your fund balance is living in, so to speak. So that's a, often a helpful tool um, to kind of get some uh, more detailed information from looking at a report. And again, the similar options that you have uh, for the income statement as well. So if we go back to our main reports page, the last report that I want to touch on is the donation uh, reports, specifically donations by contact and by household. So um, these are essentially, uh, these are similar reports. Uh, this is going to be showing you donation information uh, by each individual contact. If you've set up households to track donors, um, you can run this one so that you're generating a household statement. So if you have, you know, three people in a household um, and they've all given contributions rather than generating a statement for each person in the house, which is what would happen if you uh, ran donations by contact, you can generate one household statement. Um, but let's go ahead and look at donations by contact, for example. So again, you've got the same date filter, date options, report filters. This one you can see has some different options. So you can filter by funds or purposes or your accounts. Um, you can also filter by amount threshold. So if you wanted to see just donors who have given over $250, um, you'd be able to do that. Um, you can also filter by contacts, either by individual contacts or uh, contacts that are in a particular group. Uh, also report layout, you have some different options here. Uh, details would refer to um, seeing the individual contributions that make up these totals. So this report right now is just showing the, the totals for donors, both the what is tax deductible and what is not tax deductible if you've recorded anything like that. Um, but if you want to see the individual contributions that make up those totals, you can click details. If you're wanting to include contact information, name, address, or uh, address and email address and phone number, you can include that as well. Um, and then there's just some options as well as uh, if you're wanting to just see people who aren't in households or people that you haven't generated a statement for, um, those are some options as well. Um, so if, for example, you are using households, uh, you might want to generate your household statements first from the donations by household report. And then uh, the second, you would secondly run this donations by contact and just filter out or just display contacts that are not in households. So you're not uh, duplicating statements. Um, similar thing with, uh, you could also do it by um, just including donors who have not already received a statement. Um, so a few different options there for report layout that's different from some of the more accounting focused reports. The, you'll notice that there is a different or a, an additional um, drop down here for extra action. So you still have share, save, print and download. Um, and these buttons, just like on any other report are referring, they're going to share, save, print, or download the report itself. If you're wanting to actually generate statements and either print or email them, you'll want to go to extra actions. So you'll have the option to either print or email. So if we print, for example, uh, we can set up the uh, format of our statements. 
our, our logo, we can include a message that will um, be on the bottom of, printed on the bottom of each statement. And once we're done, we're gonna wanna make sure that we click on the print option here, this green one, because this is what's going to print and generate the contribution statements. If we were to set all this up and click this blue print button at the top, it's not going to print the statements, but it's going to print this donations by contact report. So that's something that I know that uh, can get a little confusing. So I just wanted to draw attention to that. Uh, you'll just want to make sure that you do use the print button or if you're emailing the email option um, that's down at the bottom of um, the pop-up information so that you're actually generating statements and not just a copy of this report. So if we go back, um, I know that's only just a handful of reports that we have available. If you have specific questions on um, any of the reports we covered or any of the ones that we didn't, our support team is always happy to help. You can reach us, um, our office hours are 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. And you can reach us by phone, which would be 888-274-1316. Or you can always shoot us an email by sending that to support at aplos.com or you can also uh, click on this messenger icon that you should see in the bottom right of any page in aplos to start a new conversation with us as well um, so either way if you have questions about reports and um, generating them or sharing them or saving them we'd be happy to help and we thank you for using aplos